All right, what's up, everybody? I am uh, gonna try some new stuff. I posted a, a thread on VGG asking for some ideas from the community on maybe what they'd like to see out of some videos, which is a risky thing to do. <laughs> Opening myself up to everyone like that, never know what you're gonna get, but. Uh, by and large, as usual, the community was really receptive, and I think they had some good feedback. So, uh, in light of that, I'm going to experiment with this. And oh my God, look at this hand! What? Oh my God! Um, and I'm going to talk about rig building and timing of runs, specifically uh, for this game. So, <clears throat> we'll see how this goes. I'm just kind of winging this. But in terms of the starting hand, obviously it had nothing to do with the rig. Um, this hand is nuts. Ah, this hand is nuts. Um, I mean, the dirty laundry will get us a run, maybe not into a central on the first turn. We're gonna have money with this hand, obviously, um, but absolutely nothing in terms of the rig. And the rig is really, um, I'm going to mulligan, as crazy as that is. But anyway, um, <clears throat> for the for this sake, uh, I'm going to define rig as sort of having your setup, having your cards on the table, installed and paid for, that you need um, to give you the foundation to move forward and win the game. So it's really important. I think this deck is a great example of a, of a rig. So in that last... In that last uh, hand, you saw nothing but economy, which gives me nothing for the long game. Um, as opposed to here, I have a prepaid voice pad, which I'll have recurring credits for the rest of the game, and a corroder, which is a breaker to uh, get me through ice. So these are two permanent cards that will help me the entire game. And uh, first thing I'm going to do is... Oh, shoot. I screwed that up already. I should have played my prepaid... Um, Getting distracted by the new content here, I guess. Oh, well, we'll just take a priority requisition instead. That's fine. Um, <clears throat> so, I mean, I'm running here R&D simply because it's open and I'm getting paid to run it. So I don't think there's really too much mystery as to what I'm doing here. Um, thankfully, I'm going to still get value out of the second dirty laundry here. Uh, okay, we got an Eli coming. So that's good, um, and I'm not going to run this this card here on the last click. Uh, it could be even something as simple as like a Victor 1, or a Victor 2 uh, would definitely, I mean Victor 1 would give us brain damage there. So I don't want to run on my last click, I don't. there's no reason to, he could be playing Snare. I think I had two cards in hand, so if I run on the last click, I better have a good reason to do it. So after um, the benefit of running, even though we didn't score, is that uh, we saw an Eli. So it's very likely that he installed that Eli here. And it's also very likely he's going to res it if we run it. <clears throat> so I'm going to run it. Um, in my opinion, the best time to run in this game is when you have nothing out, no breakers. Um, oh, Quandary. Okay. Um, and... Since I have a click to spare here, the worst thing I think this could be with him having seven credits is a Victor 2, and I could pay off the Trace. Um, there's a Trace 2 for brain damage, so I'm going to run this, try to get him to spend more money. Plus, at this stage in the game, uh, he has not. we have not seen an agenda in his hand. However, it's very likely that he has one. Yeah. In fact, it's it's not out of the realm of possibility that he has two. Um, we're getting some good accesses here. <clears throat> but, yeah, I mean, I probably am safe running on my fourth click here. Considering his identity being cerebral imaging, it's not likely he's playing a uh, snare or anything like that, but... I mean, at this point, we're on match point. He's He might run one-pointers, so we might need to score two more points. But we certainly have a chance to win by seeing one more agenda. And it's so early in the game, I 
really don't see a need to rush into any mistakes. Um, okay, running first click. In case it's a buyer right, I have all three clicks available so I can deal with it. Um, and he's going to let me in anyway. Alright. Um, so now I'm going to revert to the rig. So sometimes it's a balance of going back and forth between running and building the rig. Um, I want to run early as much as possible to put pressure on him. Now you notice, um, even though I assume that was a corroder or a Eli, I still didn't install the corroder. Why? Because a it might not be um, an Eli. It could be like a roto turret. And why? And for example, actually, as a matter of fact, this could be a roto turret on his HQ since he hasn't resed it. Um, something to consider. So. Um, I don't want to just blindly run into a piece of ice with only a corroder installed. I have one in the deck. So I can test run it and get it other ways, but why mess around? That's, that would hurt my tempo so much more than just waiting the few turns to install it in the meantime. So again, I, there's no reason for me to not pressure his hand here. Uh, he's drawn every turn. Um, and there's no reason to believe that he has not drawn agendas. Um, so, um, bu -bu -bu -bu. played that lucky fine last turn. Uh, economy is what fuels everything. I mean, that's, that goes kind of without saying it's kind of obvious. But um, there's a great card for this deck. Uh, this would be considered the rig, sort of, here. Um, this resource. And I'm going to get that down. Okay. So, <laughs> as you can see, those two plays really strengthen my position for the long term of the game. And also makes me an immediate threat to get into a server. It's not likely with Cerebral Imaging that he's looking to score out of a remote server. Um, however, uh, in this deck, I do play Nerve Agent, which will certainly come in handy against cere Cerebral Imaging, um, being able to see multiple cards. Um, but additionally, all right, so there's one card we're not seeing there. It could be an agenda. Um, but there's only one. So at this point in time... Max, he has one agenda in hand, which means that his R&D is still really juicy. So I'm kind of thinking right now, what do I need to do to line up myself to get into this uh, R&D and probably hit him with a maker's eye as soon as possible. Um, going to draw a little bit. This is really nice. So... 18 credits. I I can I think I can safely run R and R and D now, um, and just install on the fly whatever this is. And if he doesn't res it, or if it's a code gate, I can deal with both of these. So, um. I'm going to do that. I have 18 credits. I can afford to install and break anything he reses. Um, well, okay, he can't res Archer. I would have a hard time with Archer, but I can deal with anything else with either Clicks, Deus Ex, or Breaker. So I'm going to see if I can get some information here, mainly. Um, still getting him to spend money, too, hopefully. Okay, there's the Eli. So actually, um, what I'm going to do is I'm not desperate to rejected. click through that and install my torch just for the quandary at this time. Uh, the information is plenty here. So um, I can set up this maker's eye actually for next turn. And um, the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to finish my turn and ultimately get this corroder installed. 
and um, then I can run here with a Maker's Eye next turn. Yeah, this is going to be good. Okay, so let's just keep going into the deck a little bit. Um, that's awesome, actually. We got more money, lots of money, and a Corroder down. Um, if he's playing Power Shutdown, which is a popular card, um, one thing I've learned recently with that card being in play, Power Shutdown, is to protect my assets. And uh, Corroder has a two install cost, and Power Shutdown only affects hardware and programs. So prepaid voice pad is also two credits to install, and I'll happily trash a prepaid over a Corroder. So, um, I, you know, in my Andy decks, Gabe decks, I've been running Silencer to protect the Corroder. So I think that's an important thing to think about uh, in the game nowadays with Power Shutdown, because uh, that is a very, very powerful card and can totally cripple you if you're not ready for it. So, all right. Um, ideally, now he's got another piece of ice here. So, for me to land this Maker's Eye safely, I'm probably looking at needing to get a test run out, um, get another breaker on the table, get my rig up, uh, get set so that uh, I can handle anything that he reses. That's that's where I want to be uh, with this deck, especially is pretty much no matter what he throws at me, I'm ready for it. And I'm very close to that point. Um, in fact, with that second self-modifying code, that might even get me there. Um, so I think I'm just going to draw up a little bit more. This is a really nice draw for us. Uh, the test run would be nice, but... <clears throat> Let's see. I'm going to use a Maker's Eye next turn, so I don't need any more than three or two recurring credits. So I'm going to wait to play this prepaid. But what I am going to do is draw up one more time. Oh, even the Stim Hack. That's amazing. Okay. And then I'm going to play the, the, my second self modifying code. So now, at this point, um, I'm going to have answers for him. And unfortunately, it's really too bad. Um, I would love. To, I, I don't. I don't usually like to self-modifying code my torch and fem into play because it's so expensive to do it. I'd much much rather test run and scavenge. Um. So, hmm, all right, so here's what I'm thinking right now. He's gone out of his way significantly to protect R&D, obviously, um, as he should, and it's right. In the meantime, though, we have not ran his HQ, and he's up to eight cards. So he showed us a cerebral or a celebrity gift. He showed us five cards and he had one left over. So now there are uh, six, seven, eight, three cards in there we have not seen. It's uh, reasonable that there's an agenda in there. Um, and. I think we might be able to get him to spend some money too. So it's worth poking our head in, keeping him honest. Um, Rez is a toll booth. Okay. Um, let's see. How do I want to deal with that? Or do I want to deal with that? No. I'm just going to jack out. And this is a really good time, I think, to hit him with a maker's eye. Because um, since his hand size is related to the number of credits, I doubt he's going to want to res both of these pieces of ice. Um, so he, I think he's left himself a little bit vulnerable in R&D here. So he's going to take a credit and a card. And then um, 
play it. I Actually, in all honesty, I probably shouldn't have drawn that card because I could have had two clips to deal with his ice, but I still think I have plenty of money to deal with all his ice here. Um, yeah, this is fine. I can get a Deus Ex for that. And let's see. Gets a Grim. Oh my gosh, he's gonna totally pitch his hand after this. Um, sure. Let's uh, let's get our fem out. Why not? I can afford it. All right. Am I gonna be able to get through here? No, I'm not actually. Um, torches. Not out. So we're gonna lose this maker's eye. Um, but that's okay. I have recursion. Ball again rejected. And um, it's not the big. I mean, really, it's a win. He's at zero credit. So I think. I think all in all, I feel pretty good about that. Actually. <coughs> Excuse me. And let's get uh, the really the final one of the final pieces of our rig out. Uh, three prepaids is pretty pretty awesome for us. We got the professional contacts. So really, the only thing I'm missing here in my rig is um, my torch. And I have not seen a test run or a scavenge yet, so I suspect I'll be seeing that very shortly. Um, but nonetheless, I'm going to run here because he just had to throw away, I think, five cards. So at a minimum, I can get an idea of what he's throwing away. Reclamation order. Okay. All is recursion, basically. And a buyback labor. So, I mean, he, he's kind of giving us a dead giveaway right now that he's loaded in hand. And, um, I mean, he has to be, I think. He just threw away a biotic labor. I can't think of anything more important when he's on match point, or when I'm on match point, other than an agenda. Um, okay, test run, great. Carapace, meh. Um, let's get the... Same old thing will be nice. And we'll draw one more. So I'm going to pitch the carapace. He's not scorching us. And pitch the fem. So <clears throat> now that the fem is in the trash, I can test run it into play. It'd still be great, great, great to see a... Um, scavenge. There we go. Had to be coming sooner or later. I got 14 cards left in the deck. All right. So, la actually, I lied. There's one more piece of the rig, and it's Dinosaurus. It's not necessary, but um, I don't see why we wouldn't install it here. We have plenty of money. So... Here's what I'm going to do. I have two scavenges. This turn is going to be awesome. I'm just basically... I'm going to finalize my rig here. Um, so I'm going to... scavenge this femme onto that Heimdall. So that'll cost me only three credits. In the meantime, I'm going to put... Um, the dinosaurus on there so we can handle the grim pretty easily now and then I'm going to test run for my torch scavenge that bad boy into play oh crap I just need my freaking fem
Okay. Oh, gosh. Talk about annoying. All right. Um, noob here. Never played Octagon before. Okay. We're ready. Um, do you target that and target that and take our scavenge bag? And, oops. What am I doing? Okay. There we go. Torch. <sighs> and um, lucky find looks pretty good. Okay, so here's what you call a full rig for this deck. I got the console. Uh, the Dinosaurus is kind of more of the icing on top for this deck. I don't necessarily need it, um, but it certainly helps because now I can <clears throat> just get through this Grim for three instead of having to use another Femme. I do have another Femme, but I'd rather not use it um, for a Grim if I could just break it for three. So I think using it on the Heimdall there is good because... I can't keep recursing that Deus Ex forever. And the rest of this server is going to be relatively cheap. So I think next turn, I mean, I, I really don't see how we're going to lose this here. Um, let's see. Frantically puts this combination together. Um, but really what I'm looking at is um, I think I'm just going to lucky find here. Get a huge econ boost. Um, or actually, I don't even think I need that much. I'm, I'm just going to wait for the lucky find. I'll get two of them. And um, draw one more. There we go. I was hoping I might draw a maker's eye instead of having to use the same old thing. So. That's what I'm going to do. If I didn't draw it there, I was going to use the same old thing just to make her's eye and get through, but now I can save myself a click and save myself a same old thing. So let's uh, fem this for three, break this for three, break this for four, and break the last one for one. And we're going to see three cards here, so I'd say we have a pretty good chance to win the game. Hedge fund. Shipment from Sansan. San. Restructure. Not quite yet. Um, another Maker's Eye, that's awesome. So... <clears throat> Um, basically now what I'm doing is I'm drawing, just looking for my nerve agent, because, I mean, I can get into his hand freely here. I'm, I'm a bound to draw another test run. I have two left out of eight, so, um, I can, I can get this femmed and just start ransacking his hand. And next turn, I'll get another three fresh cards in it. R&D, so I'm going to prepare a little bit for next turn, take the money, and look for the nerve agent. Um, I think... I think I'll be okay with only one same old thing this game. I may or may not need the levy AR. I have a levy, um, and apparently one of the last cards in my deck here. So honestly, I'm just gonna oh retrieval run. That's 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 pretty nice. That's really nice. Let's just start hitting his hand. And next turn, I think I'm just... Man, I mean... <laughs> I want to get this nerve agent out, but... Retrieval run is just so good right now for this. 
Um, and actually draw one more. There it is. And then let's go get, uh, no, nah, let's just get it down. I don't think there's much he can do about it anyway. We have so much money. He can't, I mean, he could put another toll booth out there. It's not really going to slow us down too much. I have so much money in hand too. So yeah, fine. Okay, cool. It's fine with me. Um, I can deal with pretty much anything he throws up. The one thing I probably don't want to see would be like Janice. But I even have ways of dealing with that if I have to. So actually, come to think of it. Very, very good chance he's putting the Wotan. I remember he showed showed me the Wotan before, so I'll probably just want to get another scavenge. Um, I think I, I'm going to probably want to draw for it. Because I pitched the same old thing and I always want to have one on the table as an emergency in case I lose my levy, although that looks pretty small chance this game but nonetheless brain damage can happen so um but yeah I, I'd be willing to bet that's that's a Wotan right there that he just installed over that uh, test runs not really gonna help anymore but we do have that maker's eye uh, we're gonna get fresh cards there so um So I guess we might as well use it. We'll probably win. Good chance we'll win here. You said I paid one for the first fem, is that right? Uh, no, I didn't. I used three. No, paid three. So I'm certain he's got agendas in hand. But, I mean, there's always good chance he's got them in R&D, and we have three new cards. It's worth a look. I still have tons of money, and I have another scavenge I can eventually find. Hey, there we go. So, I mean, we had, we had other options. We had other ways to win that game, eventually getting into his hand. So... Um, anyway, I don't know if that was any different. I tried to definitely put more focus on running. Um, I may have got caught up in the game a little bit just talking, but, um, I, I at least I tried. So <laughs> give me some feedback. I'll get better and, uh, we'll, we'll, um, we'll keep improving. So hopefully you guys are enjoying this and it's helping.